Let's take a chance to look at how to build dashboards uh, using the tools that we've seen in uh, in this week. So let's take a look using Jupyter and Python. Um, and then finally, we'll take a quick look back at how to do this in Boca as well. Um, so Jupyter dashboards are enabled through three separate packages. Uh, the first is the Jupyter dashboards layout package, um, or it's a layout extension. Um, extension just because it's a Jupyter notebook extension um, is where it fits in. And uh, here's an example of what you what you can build with it. So you can take a Jupyter notebook that you have and lay it out as, as a dashboard. You can put all the relevant information on one screen and you can link things together. Here you don't see any code um, and that's because these are just the cell outputs that have been arranged. Um, so we'll go ahead and take an example of, of using this in a second. I just want to point to it's a part of uh, three packages. So this is the layout extension, um, Jupyter dashboards. Um, there is also the dashboard bundlers. Um, so what this will do is allow you to download um, your dashboard as a standalone piece. Um, here you can see they've got a um, canonical example um, of the uh, of the wavelet. And uh, here, the dashboard server. Um, so this kind of completes the, uh, the, the um, three pieces that you need. Um, so you can build a dashboard layout, you can bundle it, and then uh, the server is a standalone server which will uh, show these um, show these dashboards. I, I have less experience with the the server and the bundler. Um, I tend to just use the the layout extension and uh, use use the Jupyter notebook itself as the server. Um, so, but the, these all to do work together to kind of complete the package. Um, so if we look at how it works, um, you know, there, there's a documentation here. So let's go ahead and, and do this with some code that we already have. So this is um, some code that I have to examine the uh, vast 2017 uh, challenge data set. Um, so here, kind of our boilerplate code. Um, and uh, I'll say, so I've enabled the uh, Jupyter dashboards um, and by installing it and activating it. And what you get is this little extra bit up here in the top. So you get the dashboard view. So we're looking at the code. Um, right, we can look at a grid layout and we can also view it as a dashboard is what this button does. So here we have our code. Um, I'll just kind of scroll through. We have a number of different uh, charts um, to look at the data um, and kind of culminating in, in this chart here um, and this one with the colors. Um, so um, if we want to build this into, into a dashboard, um, this would be just a, a static dashboard, um, we can go ahead and do it as a, as a grid layout. So what this does is it kind of shows the code in the background and it shows the the output of each cell on the top. Um, so maybe it, maybe it makes sense to keep um, an overview of the data um, and it would make sense to keep uh, kind of this basic scatter plot. We could also add some, some text output if we wanted to. Um, and here we'll go ahead and keep, uh, let's keep this time series around and let's see. So we can also uh, resize these things. So if we want to uh, do it like this, we can keep just, uh, let's see which ones, which ones do we want? We can also move these around. Um, so we can move this one here. Um, we can resize this to be a little bit longer and narrower. Um, and let's move these ones over. And then we can get our, our time series plot. Um, so let's pick one of these and we can resize this here. So the output um, won't resize, but we, we could go back to the code and actually have it um, size to um, fit well into that, into that size window. Um, so this is, we, we've defined the layout here um, using, using the grid layout. And then uh, to look at it as a dashboard, um, when we hit the dashboard button, it just shows it as this output. Um, you know, these, these we could get rid of, um, right? So we could go back to the uh, notebook itself. And if we look at this code, right, it, it outputted this text because that was the last thing. So we could just say, you know, um, I think kind of the, the Python way to do that is, is like this. Pass it to squiggle, pass it to underscore. Um, so we won't see that output. We can jump back to our dashboard. Um, so we don't see that output. Um, that's, that's how to do this using uh, the notebook. And you know, if these were updating in real time, um, you know, your uh, Jupyter Notebook was, was running, um, these would update. And of course, we, we can link them together uh, using the various techniques that we've seen so far. Um, 
You can also do this in Boca. Um, so this is an example uh, dashboard from from Boca. I didn't re-implement those those plots that we just saw before in Boca, but um, but it wouldn't be too difficult. And uh, so here we we've uh, loaded Boca itself, and this is just a a bigger piece of code that's going to output this dashboard to an HTML file. Um, so uh, when we go ahead and run this, um, we did not define output file. We got to run the first piece. And we go ahead and run this. This is actually going to save it to a file. It's going to bundle up the, the data and all the plots. And uh, we get this. It's loading this this as a, as a file. Um, and here um, we can see that these interactive sliders um, interact with the graph. And of course, um, that's how we define this, right? Uh, for these sliders, we define some custom JavaScript callbacks um, to allow them to interact with these graphics. And we get the the standard drag, and this is uh, this is similar to the the first example we saw with with Boca, um, and you can see that the way these are implemented varies. So the amplitude won't redraw until you let go. Um, so that's building out this dashboard in Boca.